Good morning. I even looked at the clock then. I saw we've got six minutes left of the morning, so that's fine. <laughs> Welcome into twitch.tv forward slash ice cream plus. My name is Graham Day. I'm joined by the man that we call Bibi. Hello. Who has some very uppity air going on today, Bib. Look at that. I'm just doing my best Morrissey uh, cosplay. I mean, <laughs> I'm not a bigger twat as Morrissey is. I mean, I, I love the Smiths. Mm. I like his solo stuff <laughs> as a person. He's a wanker. Um, but... I woke up with hair like this today, and I thought, Do you know what? I'm not going to change it. I'm not even going to run any gel in it. I'm not going to put my hat on. We're rolling with it. See that? It's part of the fun of tuning into the scoop. If you listen to this on the podcast mm-hmm. services, hey, gaming Nacho, how you doing? Hey, how's the walk? Get those knees hey, up. Hey, sugar. Hey. Uh, if you are listening to this on the podcast services, then you don't get to see see what Bibby looks like every day. You, you, mm. We roll the dice as do we get Bibby in a hat? Do we get Bibby with a slick... Uh, uh, part and do we get Bibby with with the, the the floof? I mean, we don't know. But if you're on the podcast services, we appreciate you. You just miss out on this. So do feel free to drop by twitch.tv forward slash Ice Cream Uploads where we go live each and every single weekday with this, the Scoop, the UK's number one video game podcast. If we do say so ourselves, we do go live each and every single weekday at 10 a.m. Ish. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> 10 a.m. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's ish because we work in the video games industry. So we bring you the biggest, the best, and the breaking stories. Uh, but the time kind of varies a little bit because, you know, we've got work stuff to do. But anyway, it's not just about the stories. We will give you our thoughts and impressions. We want to hear your thoughts and impressions. And then we want to hear your thoughts and impressions on our thoughts and impressions. That's how the whole show works. So if you are live with us on Twitch, make sure you get involved in the chat because there are tons of people, about 700 bajillion people that do watch and listen to this podcast on demand. So please do feel free to get involved on behalf of each and every single one of those people that are watching and listening later on. So we're live on Twitch. There's a podcast on YouTube. Uh, video, no, there's a video on YouTube, there's an audio podcast on iTunes and Spotify and SoundCloud and Google Play. Literally, tons of people. Make sure you get involved. Before we start the show, though, a couple of things. Uh, first off, you may have heard it in the podcast yesterday from the studio, but we are Astro Partners. Yeah, oh, great. We knew that, Graham. We've seen that a million yeah. times before. Okay, well, that's fine because I'm going to play this little video. You might have seen this before. This was our Astro announcement video. We've been using Astro headsets for a very long time. Let's make it official. Boom! Astro is the official audio partner of Ice Cream Uploads. Let's go. You knew that already. And there you go. See that? Use code ice cream for 5% off. Well, that's now out of date. That's out of date. That's the reason I wanted to play it. It's, it's wrong. But you can use code ice cream now to get 10% off. Also, you can use code ice cream on Logitech G items. So if you go to the Logitech G website, the global website, when you get to check out, type in ice cream, you'll save yourself 10% there. And if you think, you know what, I want some new microphone stuff as well, you've been eyeing up the new blue microphones, maybe you want the blue Sona or a blue Yeti or something like that, you get 10% off those too. Mm-hmm. So if you head to blue microphone website, uh, Logitech G, um, I think maybe even the Logitech website and the Astro website, Code Ice Cream will get you 10% off now across all of those websites. Fill your boots. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, jumping in the chat, JMK says, morning all. I'll read JMK. Good to see you in, dude. Tito Hello. says, in office uh, today, so just pop in to say hi, bye. Hi, bye. Hi, bye. Hi, bye. <laughs> Gad Gad says, good morning, gents. Good morning, Gad. Uh, Gad, Gad. Yes, just the one Gad today, actually. Mm. <laughs> just the one. <laughs> <laughs> just Gad. Go, 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 go. See, fuck me. We got Gag, uh, uh, Gad rather than Gagad, and then I says, good, good morning. <laughs> So my brain's yeah. like, oh, well, we've got an extra guest somewhere. We need to throw it in somewhere. So good, good morning, God. Nice. Yes, this is going to be a great show. It's not like we've got a bunch of stories to run through or anything. Oh, wait, that's exactly what we've got to do. Uh, but also, we have had confirmation that our Logitech Play box, our Logi Play box sent from Logi, uh, Logitech and, and the home is Astro, um, has been sent. That was sent yesterday. So it's either arriving in the studio today or it'll be there for us uh, on Monday. Obviously, we're not going to stream from the studio until Tuesday. So whatever is in that box, we can share with you by Tuesday, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Royal Mail doesn't screw it up and it all arrives and everything is good. Nice. I mean, I don't know if it's about Royal Royal Mail, but you get what I'm saying. So, yeah, if you want to see what's in that box, uh, box, do feel free to check us out then. Also, as always, exclamation mark loot drop. If anyone is thinking about throwing down a sub to the channel, like Gaga did yesterday for 25 months in a row. Wow. 
I think he's in a row, doesn't say it, but it's, it's, it's enough. 25 yeah. months, over two years of support on the channel. Madness. Um, Legend. But if you are thinking of throwing down exclamation mark loot drop, we'll just remind you that anyone that is a sub can get a prize, and that will not be this Monday, but the Monday after, one person will get a free prize just for being a sub. So I see you. Let's go, baby. Um, okay, let me jump into the split screen. As we have a few articles to run through, it says Bibby's in the ICU studio. He's not, so let's get rid of that. Bosh. Uh, we have a few articles to run here. through today, uh, starting with GameStop. It is a matter of fact now that GameStop hates children. Ish. Ish. <laughs> it's not quite. Embellished a little bit. Yeah, a little, little, little bit to get the people in. Uh, GameStop employees gripe at being uh, used as a free daycare service this is written by sean murray at the gamer that is how we're going to kick things off so gamestop employees are being used as a free daycare service that's where we'll kick things off we then have a bunch of different articles to jump through today talking about twitch's revenue split you may have seen this week twitch has been in the news for a bunch of different things gambling on the website or not or actually yes you can depending on how you look at it is one issue but now that has been followed up with twitch changing revenue splits to make sure that they take more money away from creators that's where we're going to kick things off we'll then jump in well that's where we follow things up should i say we'll then jump into stalker 2 a game that bibby is massively hyped about that was coming out in 2022 but then has been delayed to 2023 and it's now been delayed again to 2024 so bibby at some point in the next 10 to 15 years you might be able to get this play and how do you feel about that i did say it was going to get delayed but it's amazing that it's called stalker 2 and it's now been delayed by two years graham <laughs> let's go uh <laughs> then we'll talk about a popular youtuber launching his own game publisher we'll talk about a brand new xbox series x has been spotted in the wild <gasps> and do you know what we didn't even realize but we saw it on this channel the other day we actually streamed it on this channel the other day. If you want to know what it is, we'll jump about that through. And then we will jump into our final segment, which if I type exclamation mark FF in the chat, you will get the audible skills of the man that we call We've Got BBDO, which is this. Free game Friday. Yeah. Free game. Ding, ding. Friday. Nice. Um, Baby really wanted to uh, play it for you in person, but because he's a massive success now, um, he's basically trashed his guitar so that he can't do that for you. I um, <laughs> set it on fire last week. So, yeah, if you want Baby to play that song for your live ever again, you basically just have to donate shitloads of money to the uh, the Casa de la Bib cause, uh, and, yeah. and, and that is just is what it is. Sorry, mate. Keep I mean, the lights on the strings. He, and the guitar. Say, he needs all of your cash. For nothing, just just because he can. It's just the way he is. Bibby two Lambos, we call him. He wants to be Bibby three Lambos. Bibby two guitars next. God. Anyway, welcome into the stream. How are you all doing? Zag says, "Isn't being the sub the prize?" Well, it is. It is really Zag because you get all of this content. You get to, you get to sit there and listen to things like this. Free game Friday. And, and and if Free Game Friday doesn't tickle it for you, then then maybe random attack from insects and wildlife. Fucking hell, size of this moth. Fucking hell, size of that moth, mate. Uh, so, yeah, you get all of that shit just for being a sub. You don't even have to be a sub to get that stuff. Uh, but being a sub means you get it without ads. So, you know, that's a benefit. That is a benefit. Nice. Tie me up, baby. Oh, wait, subscriber. Got confused. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> West, you're on early. Are we, though? Are we, though? Maybe we're on late. I mean, technically, we are both, really. Technically, mm -hmm. we're starting at 10 a.m., we're on late. But for an ice cream upload at 10 a.m., we're still quite early. So, yeah, <laughs> nice. Uh, uh, or maybe you're late. Oh, no, Gagad said it already. Nice. S same minds. Fair point. Ah, fuck. West is here. I know. No, I did see it. I tried to ignore it for a little bit, but I thought he'd actually notice. So I, I, I called him out just a little bit. But now we're talking about it. This is kind of stretching out. This is awkward as fuck. Anyway, let's jump into some news. Bibi. Mm. Would you like to abandon your kids at GameStop who hate children? I mean, that's that sounds like I've got more than one, but I would not like to. <laughs> uh, I would not like to leave my only child uh, at GameStop. I don't believe that they, it should be a creche or it is a nursery. Well, well, this is a whole conversation. I literally have not read this article, so I don't know where this journey is going to take us. This is written by Sean Murray at The Gamer. It says, GameStop employees gripe at being used as free daycare service. Quote, your kids are not our problem, end quote. Uh, so it's no surprise that kids love video games and can be easily distracted after entering a GameStop. Unfortunately, some parents use this to their advantage and park their kids at a mall GameStop while they go shopping elsewhere. The practice is called GameStop Daycare, and uh, a new report from Kotaku shows GameStop employees are fed up with taking care of kids for free. Fuck's sake, bib. 
Oh, yeah. I, I just about got him on stream then. <laughs> Click back into it as he, as he pulled it out. Uh, anyway, quote, uh, yeah, a lot of us are getting uh, tired of parents thinking that they can basically just dump their kids into our care while they go shopping. One current employee told the p- uh, publication. Like, if you're going to leave your kids somewhere while you shop, leave them at home with a babysitter. Your kids are not our problem. We already have enough to deal with, uh, end quote. The concept of GameStop Daycare has been around for quite a while, with posts on the GameStop sub- uh, subreddit dating back to 2016. One even started charging parents for dumping their kids just last month the gamestop employee asked quote so what do you guys do when kids randomly walk in while their parents are shopping elsewhere and uh end quote several users said they usually contact mall security to report an abandoned child one even said they quote called the cops when someone legit dropped off a toddler in my store and left to go down to the nail salon at the other end of the shopping center fucking hell uh gamestop employees certainly have more than enough to deal with already if it's not low pay long hours or poor work condition uh conditions it's the fear that they're just moments away from being fired to make way for a new nft venture all this has left gamestop workers with a short fuse when it comes to children Quote, there was one instance in particular in which a woman came by and asked me if she could leave her kids here when she went to get her hair done, said another GameStop employee. I told her that not only could she not leave her kids at the store because it's a retail space, but that it's illegal to knowingly leave your child unattended. She didn't take too kindly to my answer, and I was a bit more aggressive with my wording at the time, if I'm being honest. What a fucking article. Up and down and so on. <laughs> I mean, we've obviously absolutely clicked bit of that. GameStop hates children. Um, it's it's not really a case of that, though. I mean, I mean, obviously that's what we've gone for to get people in to have the conversation. What do you guys think, Bib? What do you think? GameStop says other people's kids are not their problem. Agree? Disagree? Thoughts? Uh, wholeheartedly agree. Putting your sh- putting yourself into their shoes, and I'm. I'm being very vague. I think you worked in retail before, right? Yeah. Working with the general public. Yeah, so I worked at B&M. I was on the front page of the B&M website for about four years at Let's one point. When I was a, yeah, exactly. A 16-year-old, but well, 15 and a half-year-old Bibby got his national insurance card and went straight to work at B&M. Let's do it. Um, but yeah, like be, being working with the public is, a lot of the times it's quite nice because people are pleasant, but a lot of the time they are fucking assholes. I think that the world owes them something. And when it comes to screaming children, albeit I've got one now, it it grates me. And it, I, I imagine it grates everybody else as well. No one wants that. So imagine being in a store, which GameStop, I think is one of the one of the companies very much like what Game Belong do over here now, where they have the areas where they'll have like 10 PCs and you can go in there and you can play the stuff. But they created like a like a social space didn't they where they had like four tellies a few couches they had a drinks uh thing in the in the corner um where you're able to go and collect stuff and have biscuits and chocolate or whatever and obviously parents have taken this upon themselves to think that this is now a daycare center where they can just go in there there's a fiver i'll come back in an hour's time or something and as i'm as i'm explaining that I think it might be a bit of a grey area. People don't. They, these people who are working there have no responsibility for your child. It's there for the general public to be able to use. However, like it says in all, also in the article, that if you are knowingly leaving your child unattended, that is illegal. You cannot, if they cannot care for themselves, be left in a space where they are intended to fend for themselves in a public place. And that's exactly what the people are doing. They're using it as a crash for them to be able to go and do their shopping for an hour or go and get their hair done or whatever else. That's obviously wrong. And the, if, it, if, anything, if anything was to happen to those kids, who do you think the parents are going to blame first? The person who's on minimum wage trying to serve 30 other people that are in that store who have no responsibility to look after the people who are playing the games, just the equipment that they're using. It's, it's outrageous. Um, but yeah. yeah, if anything was to happen to those kids, they were, the, the parents are just going to sue the people who are working there, surely. It's fucking stupid, Mike. Um, I mean, we've all lingered in a in, in a game shop probably at some point i used to spend my lunch hours when i was at college and go down mm. into town grab grab a chip for my dinner or something like that and then i'd um just go down standing game for 45 minutes until i had to start making my way back up to to college quite often didn't buy anything most of the time didn't buy anything but well, every every month or so maybe i buy one game or whatever and that was that was the, that was the game tax it was not so much game daycare it was game day care that's what it was mm. there you go so um we've all kind of done that a little bit but but we are people that won't be 
running around, grabbing stuff, screaming, playing, fighting with our uh, siblings. I mean, I don't know, maybe some of you, I don't know, whatever. But the idea that toddlers are being dropped off at game stores because people think, oh, fuck it, yeah, go on, you go and play in there. There's consoles and stuff. You can just stand there and play on it for a, for an hour or so while I get my nails and or hair or whatever done. I'll come back and grab grabbing a bit. He's... It's ridiculous. GG's to GameStop employees for actually saying something about this because it's one of the, it's it's kind of a difficult thing. You're guaranteed some people somewhere are going, well, you know, the, the state of the high streets these days, you should be thankful for anyone that comes walking in your door. And it's like, nope, nope. That's They're still buying anything. it's still not justifying <laughs> anything. Also, uh, if your shop turns into a crash, then a lot of other people are probably not going to walk into that stop as well. That's going to have a knock-on impact. Uh, so, I mean, people if, people... if we live in a world where people will actively choose to go on child-free holidays and things like that, then you can guarantee people would not go in shops if it meant that they had the similar sort of experiences going on a child-filled holiday. A child-filled shopping trip. Now you're all right. You're not. I'll just buy it from Amazon instead, which just puts the business six feet under. So, yeah. Zag says... Um, not being funny, but it depends on how my, kid, uh, my kids are acting that day. Uh, if they're being absolute assholes, then I would glad, uh, gladly leave them there. <laughs> uh, Wes says, we had a similar issue at Ikea, uh, to which Zag then says, were they left there as daycare, West, or did they just get lost and aged while, uh, whilst at the shop? Went in age six, came out age 21. I think we've all done that too. <laughs> Uh, but it was actually it was actually worse than that. I said we had a crash for when people were shopping, but part of the agreement we say parents stay at the shop. Uh, we had a bomb scare slash evacuation once, and no par uh, no parents came to collect four children. We had to hand them over to the police. Fuck! Imagine yeah. just going. I'm gonna go to IKEA. Gonna put my, pop my kid in there. Grab myself some Swedish meatballs and fuck off to uh, you know the industrial trade over the way just so I can go to the gym or something in peace. Some people are absolute scrolls in that sort of way because that that for me there is no forgiving that just because you want to fucking mooch off without your kids no 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 uh baby bigging it up 30 people in the shop yeah right <laughs> <laughs> creator space one thank you very much for the raid have we have we met before it's always nice to see a raid from someone new welcome in welcome in thank we you are a video game po uh, podcast and we're actually talking about gamestop employees uh in america there is there is a trend called games uh, GameStop daycare where people just go do the shopping in a big mall and they go fuck it let's leave the kids in GameStop you guys just stay there play games and we'll come back in a bit which is not too bad if your kids are uh, teenagers old enough to look after themselves and you're only going to be five minutes while you go actually you don't want to go stand in a queue while I wait for my shelves to be passed to me or whatever you go play a couple of games of Lego Star Wars or whatever they've got on display in the uh, the GameStop store but people are actually just going in yeeting toddlers into this shop and then going and getting their nails and hair done. What? So mm. there you go. Uh, CS1 Raid, welcome in. Join the cunt. Uh, cunt? Nice. <laughs> That's not what I meant to say. <laughs> well, you join the cunts now. I apologise. Join, join the cult <laughs> of Google. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. you, you were podcasting too. <laughs> welcome in. We are new to the podcast area, uh, so thank you much for the shout. You are welcome. You're welcome. Um, we have husband crash here in the UK. Usually a clever pub sign uh, when near a sh uh, shopping centre. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you, Shamik, for the uh, follow. Thank you, Creator Space, for the follow as well. Welcome in. Welcome in. Uh, we are... Um, we, we actually work for a video game marketing agency called Jelly Media, so we are video game marketers, but we are... Twitch partners because we do video game streaming and, and stuff as well alongside that. So welcome in, welcome in. Um, Did we just become best friends? Oh, there was yeah. something else I wanted to mention. There was something else, and it's completely gone out of my mind. Now. Was it in the chat? Let me, let me go back up. Uh, hmm. I have no idea if that link is real or not, but I'm going to delete that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's googly foot. <laughs> don't th it sounds like something I don't want to be clicking on, even if it is a real link. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't remember what I was going to say. It was it was something along this uh, area of eating children somewhere, but I can't remember what it was. Meta Quester, thank you for the follow. Murph FM, thank you for the follow too. It's not dirty, promise. <laughs> I don't believe it. <laughs> I don't believe it. I don't um, believe it. So, babe, are you telling me that yes. you wouldn't go? to GameStop and just drop Joseph there and, you know, go get your nails done again? <laughs> Probably not, no. Uh, I, I actually I actually like my child. Um, I mean, there is obviously, a, I don't want to say exceptional circumstances. There shouldn't be at any point you leaving your child unattended anywhere. But I, I, I definitely remember being, 
I want to say around nine or ten, and my mum go into pound stretcher off whatever shop was that was on the dent and crown point at the time and me just wandering into game that's me wandering into game for like 10 minutes on my own to look at whatever game that i wanted to buy at the time there's a bit of a difference between someone being next door and knowing where i am and coming to get me anytime soon and then leaving a child purposefully in the hands of employees for like an hour's time with no intention of actually buying anything i mean i didn't to think I had an intention of buying anything anyway, but I'm just reading the back of whatever football game or whatever it is that's grabbing my attention at that point. I do think there is a, a small grey area with this, though, because they, they've created social stations for people in the past, and I think they still have them around GameStop anyway, because I wanted to try... If I don't know if... For those of you that have been around this podcast long enough, we actually covered a story maybe last year, maybe 18 months ago now, about GameStop wanting to get into just video... Uh, not just video games, but also selling merchandise, um, having areas where people could come in and socialise, and being able to sell uh, food and drink so that they're not just relying on the income of said video games. It's just going to be a whole social space as well. And I think people are taking advantage of that. They're, they are leaving their children there with maybe a fiver in their hand to then potentially sit there for an hour or two with their friends and have it as a social hotspot rather than their intention of maybe having a try before you buy stand, not just the old cubicles that you used to be able to have where they have the console behind glass and you can play whatever's on the screen, literal sofas with two controls and you can play like arcade club, but without the glamour. Um, Yeah. Well, for a while. I was still there eating a pizza while I had a balloon strapped to me. So <laughs> I still have the picture, but believe me, next time we go, I went maybe two or three months ago with our kid. It's completely different now. It is amazing. Like they've brightened it up. The floor that was meant to have the esports floor on, they've changed everything around and added a new floor and it's, it's mint. I mean, it always was mint. It's not as dingy as it was. It's, yeah. It's, it feels like it's catered to a different audience now, which is a bit of a letdown, but anyway. Um, yeah. It, it, where do you draw the line with this? I mean, it just comes down with parenting, surely. Like, you not leaving your 10-year-old child there for an hour or so, not knowing what exactly they're getting up to, or the general public being able to come in and saying, hiya, pal, to his 10-year-old child, and then potentially nicking him. Do you know what I mean? Like, you don't know... What's going to happen to that child if you're leaving them in a public space for so long? It's not up to GameStop employees to look after your children either. There is there is a grey area, but there's also a parenting duty. Like, how long can you leave anyone there for? I mean, you shouldn't be leaving someone no. anywhere anyway. No. It's there for social space for, like, me or you to go in. Adults are people who are, like teenagers like 15 16 year olds who are going in there to go meet the friends play a few games have a can of pop maybe have a twix do you know what i mean before moving on <laughs> very, not staying there all day uh, very, uh, shout out to uh, twix who sponsored this podcast by the way let's go they haven't but, but twix do love i do twix. love a twix yeah same same <laughs> absolutely would take that spot uh just want to jump back up uh meta quest says gamestop is a dying business and then before that the uh the googly foot only fans link he said uh, it's not dirty i promise it's literally a black sock with googly eyes while Bivy was talking then the uh the uh curiosity took hold and it absolutely just is a black sock with googly eyes <laughs> so there you go uh, <laughs> he's definitely opened that up in an incognito tab <laughs> i didn't even think that far i literally just clicked straight onto it he's oh. next to all the news feeds so that's going to be burned into my internet search history forever mm. nice uh zag says there is a market here though surely get yourself a big marquee spelled right uh set up Loads of consoles. Get yourself all the checks and insurance to be in charge of children, etc., etc. Charge the parents. Genius. Back in a sec while I go to Dragon's Den. Well, there is mm. a market for this. I don't know how um, fruitful it is because my local shopping centre is the Trafford Centre. Um, massive mall in uh, Manchester. Um, obviously, the Trafford Centre. Um, I imagine a lot of people know what it is. And near all the food areas and stuff there is a crash and play area where you can pay and it's not cheap it's like i don't know 15 20 quid or whatever to leave your kid there they go into the soft play areas or whatever and bounce off the walls full of e-numbers while you go and get your shopping done so you can pay for this but people clearly don't want to pay for this because people just want to send the shop uh, the kids into uh GameStop daycare because you don't spend 15, 20 quid. Your kids go in there and they're not just playing with uh, soft play stuff. They're actually going and mm -hmm. playing with high-tech consoles and so on. Um, also, I think that tells in the fact that the Trafford Centre has a crash and play area, which I'm pretty sure went out of business because not enough people were using it 
that's because they're just sending the kids into McDonald's, letting them sit in the, the big food area, and they're going, once you finish that, mooch down to game, play a couple of games on Lego Star Wars, and we'll see you in a bit. I'm just going to go and get my nails done down there or whatever. Mm. So there is definitely a market for that kind of thing. And I think Game and GameStop are aware of that. That's the reason why, obviously, Bibi mentioned the Belong stuff. They want people to come in and sit and stay, but people mm. don't want to spend that that. Like, what was it, like 15 quid for an hour or something like that? People don't want to spend 15 quid for an hour. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah. 15 quid for one hour playing a game when you can buy Xbox Game Pass for 15 quid and you can play a million games <laughs> for a month. Uh, it The costs are hard to swallow, but it depends on what you want from that. And I think Game realized there is something there, but it's about presenting that in a way w where it presents true value. There needs to be an experience or a function. And if that function is just um, sitting your kids down to let you go shopping, well, th do you think that's worth 15 quid? If it is, then that's where you spend your money. If it isn't, then, well, that's not where you spend your money. You, you take them with you, leave them at home, do whatever. Just eating them at a GameStop employee, is that's you passing on your problems to someone else. Uh, but like, a GameStop employee is going to be like, I mean, this is... It, usually, the the average age of someone who's probably working at GameStop is like seventeen to maybe twenty one. That's a lot of responsibility for them that are already responsible for looking after thirty other people who are trying to buy something within that stand. I mean, I'm just using thirty. I don't know what game. I've never. I don't think I've ever been into a GameStop in America or Canada. I've only ever been to the one in Dublin. I don't think we've even got them over here in the UK, no, right? I don't think so. I think it's just um, Ireland. Yeah. Yeah, so that's the only one I've ever been to, and it was pretty. It was quite rammed. Uh, there definitely was more than thirty people in there, but yeah, I do. I definitely think that there is a market. Maybe not for you leaving your fucking five year old kid who's going to be destroyed. That turnover of pads and stuff like that will be horrendous uh, for peripherals in places like that, and they'll just get robbed all the time. And but I definitely think that there there is a market for something like that, but just not in a general store. There's just so many knock on problems. Obviously, you've got the kid. The kid abduction is the main thing, but just having a, fi <laughs> I mean, yeah. a five year old kid being holding onto a controller, gammying it up or whatever. And then you've got other kids that are just stood waiting. You're, you're making it difficult for other kids to play games, which is another reason potentially for, for GameStop to lose business. But what if other kids want to get on this console and then just beat the crap out of your kid because they're not getting off it because they've got nowhere else to be? What they're going to do is just go and stand in the corner next to all these games that they're not old enough to play or something like that. So, yeah. Multiple reasons. Do you know what? We'll put a pin in this one there because this story is just a stupid story. And we've, we've clearly, the reason we're talking about it, because it is stupid, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll move on. We've got a bunch of different uh, stories. We're on the side of GameStop with this one, right? Yeah, exactly. Just for so, clarification. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> we said GameStop hates children. They don't. They don't. That's obviously the clickbait kind of stuff. They don't. It's the GameStop are, are stupidly expecting people to just be good people. And do you know what? Sometimes people are shit houses. So this, this is what it is. Uh, noted, GameStop sell children. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Sir Squillix, I don't know if I shouted you out. Thank you for the follow as well, dude. Appreciate that. Uh, right off to get my daily walk in. Mrs. is taking me for coffee. Leaving Lurk. Have a great weekend, all if I don't catch you beforehand. Enjoy the walk, Timeless. Enjoy. Uh, for those that don't know who Timeless is, do Take check care, him out. He, uh, he streamed some PUBG. He was streaming this morning. I was in his stream and then he finished abruptly. How dare he? Uh, Gagad says, I remember back in the day, my parents and others would happily leave prams outside shops when they went in. Nowadays? Nah, I'm not going to it. No, now they don't take the pram and they just let you walk into the shop and they go somewhere else. That's that's what it is now. As we just found out. <laughs> uh, Bibi, remember the play area in Stablegate at Denton with the PlayStation console uh, in it? Parents had a few beers in the bar and the kids just popped into the play area. I think there's... there's I don't remember... <sighs> I don't remember the stable gate. I remember the Funky Forest at Mottram Wood. They had like a, a, a couple of PlayStation 1s in there. I remember playing Pandemonium way back when. They still have the Funky Forest, but they don't have anything like that. It's just a big play area now, but I don't remember the stable gate. There's um there's a co a good place called Applewood Farm. I think it's like towards Warrington Lee sort of way, and they had that I'd, I'd never seen that until i saw this it was like you've got the cheap grabber machines next to the child's play area it's one of those like buffet like a like a toby carvery restaurant kind of thing yeah um yeah, that's what a lot of mushroom wood was that as like a child play area and then in that yeah there's this like unit that's that's about the height of your old crt tvs but obviously a little bit chunkier because it's got all the gubbins inside it and yeah but it was either a ps2 or a ps3 in it and i was like Fuck, why did I never have uh, see these? I mean, I, 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 I'd have been gutted if I'd had to keep flicking 20p's or whatever into it, but but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's like a Brewers Fair or a Green King pub. 
I yeah, think that's I'm, what they used to usually have them. I'm not sure what Applewood Farm is. It's that same sort of vibe, though. Uh, well, an abandoned child, uh, an abandoned child is an abandoned Stay child, and child endangerment is a crime. It is Zag. Things I do to be tied up. <laughs> the things I do to be tied up. Well, you're tied up with us for another month. And you are now in the loot drop uh, a week on Monday. Just a reminder for anyone that's new, because we've had uh, a raid from Create Space, which we appreciate. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. We do a monthly giveaway, which can be anything from our merch, Ice Cream Uploads baseball caps, to a game of your choice or other things. Um, and this always happens on the first Monday of the month. Anyone that's a sub on that day is automatically entered into the giveaway. So if you've got a Prime or a, or whatever and you want to throw that down, do feel free. You don't have to. You don't have to. Uh, just being here is good. We appreciate that. Um, looking after jam eaters and yogurt chuckers. I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the blow up pubs uh you can get uh this is a gaming version yeah exactly just just throw up a, a, a blow up beyond arena nice i wouldn't personally be looking after them i would be owner other minions will look after them <laughs> see this is the plan i i've got a great idea let's look after the shits but i won't look after the shits other people will look after the shits i will just take the profits nice uh tiny yoda in the stream you are Good morning or afternoon now. Good after morning, uh, Yoda. Welcome in. That's not long enough in the Trafford Centre, though. Yeah, Trafford Centre is a bit like Ikea, but not as bad. Ikea, you go in and you come out with loads of shelving that are called words that you can't pronounce and, and <laughs> Swedish meatballs. Uh, you oh, you come back with a, with a full-on, like, winter beard sort of stuff. Uh, whereas the Trafford Centre, you come out, come along with, like, five o'clock shadowing kind of stuff like fuck mm. i only came here to get a pair of socks and I, I've, I've come out with 12 high street bags god damn i do love the trafford center though yeah like it's it's always chocker and it's all it's fucking well hard to get around but it's amazing like obviously best food court ever but i mean you've got, it, I you've love got the trafford center. five guys and slim chickens next to each yeah, other right next much. to each other <laughs> it's sandwiched by it with a with a las iguanas center and, and that's good as well that is good I love last one. Um, this is the first time I've seen your channel. Do you cover any VR gaming content? We don't play any on the channel um, as such. MetaQuester. I'm I assumed you were into VR with a name like MetaQuester. Hey, how you doing? Um, we do have a few VR headsets. We've got a MetaQuest. We've got PSVR. Um, I'm not sure if we've still got an old school Oculus. Oh, no, that was Steve's. So I don't think we got that. But we've got a bunch of vr stuff in our setup. We don't tend to do anything with it yet, though. Um but uh, we, we, we cover VR news. We are very pro-VR. Um, we are just, like a lot of people, um, waiting for VR to evolve to a point where it's 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 more mainstream. So, um, yeah, we, we are we are, we are pro-VR, just not as much VR as you probably would like. Uh, but I think the topic you are discussing becomes a dystopian conversation when virtual reality becomes part of that same conversation. You know, what, as in, like, nip to the shops? But you're just in the living room with a headset on? Is that what you mean? <laughs> uh, £15 an hour per jam eater? I retract my previous statement. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it is per kid, actually. I don't know how it works. I don't know if you pay per person or you pay per Surely. per system. Like, do, could you go, okay, well, I want one PC or console or whatever, and then stick, stick your two kids in it and then they take it in turns or they play together? I don't know. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Part of your employee structure could be uh, security to walk around the game shops, etc., and collecting the children that are in there abusing the system. Uh, is this to child catcher slash Oliver now? <laughs> children in! <laughs> you can be an investor in my business if you want. Let's go. Uh, not to mention, uh, potty time is going to be a nightmare for kids that need some uh, someone to go with them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, and just it's having just safeguarding issues as well, though, isn't it? You then need to provide the facilities then. Because if you are, if you do have the children in there, game. I mean, none of the game stores have toilets within them. You have to leave the store to go to the 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 mall's toilet to go to them. I'd say none. That's probably blanket. I'm talking about Trafford Centre and, and similar. There probably is a few that have toilets and stuff in them. Um, but when they leave the store, do you have to send someone with them? Yeah, exactly. And and that's a whole question in itself. I mean, you need procedures for that. If your child needs a pee. Big Steve's going to take them to the toilet. And then these parents are like, I don't want Big Steve going to the toilet with my kid. Well, well we don't want your kids now a star, but here we are. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, uh, if they get beat up for being an arsehole, then it's on the kid's head. Character building. 
<laughs> I'd rather have gone to a daycare centre. Uh, like uh, when we went shopping with dad, it would have been better than just sitting outside the shop next to bags of shopping around and people asking, where's your mum and your daddy? And we were like, yes, that's it. That's the same as the gaga thing. So we just didn't have the pram. We just walked and held the bags. <laughs> yeah. uh, obviously, the short squeeze gave them faith in humanity. That must be it. Uh, drop of the loot. It, we, we will. We will. On Monday. Let's go. Um, didn't they name a cabinet after Bibi? Um, yeah, that was what, that the luscious was, ginger. No, it was it was lax. <laughs> you see, because that's actually an IQ range. I think it might be lax, but still, it, it, it's close enough. It's fine. Is our kid uh, still below the food court? Um, yes, our arcade. So there's the Namco Bandai arcade at the Trafford Center. That's next to the food court. That's still there. The uh, crash is gone, though. That was the other side. Um, one kid has the main controller. The other has the spare controller. Yeah, that's it. You just you just go in, pay for one kid to play, and then you just take one of your old like controllers from home and just give it to the little brother and go, you're playing too. <laughs> nice. Mm. Just don't plug the controllers in. You, uh, you sit playing behind... Uh, you sit playing it behind the desk and everyone thinks they're playing win-win. You get to play the games. They think they play games. <laughs> exactly. Nice. So you two... That's it. Zag and Viv are the same person. You guys should clearly be business partners. Tell you what, though, that's a good jumping off point. Business partners. That's pretty much what you are when you become a Twitch partner. I say pretty much that is legitimately what you are if you're a Twitch partner. You create uh, content, they pay you for the content providing the systems. It's win-win. Nice. Or not, as the case may be. And our next story, Ed Nightingale at Eurogamer has this one. It says, Twitch addresses the revenue split for streamers, declining to change the 50-50 split. Uh, so if anyone hasn't caught this, we'll see if the, uh, the the article gives you the full recap that you need. If not, we'll build the uh, the bigger picture around it and then we'll go from there. So Ed Nightingale, Eurogamer has the article, which says, Twitch has declined to change the revenue split for streamers despite over 22,000 votes on its user voice platform. The revenue split between Twitch and streamers has long been an issue, with many claiming the current 50-50 split is stifling the growth of smaller channels. The user voice post, begun by streamer Salty Wyvern in 2020, became the most voted issue on the platform Form, as it requested Twitch change the revenue split to be 70-30, like main rival YouTube. This has now been closed by Twitch. Quote, We've been blown away by the response to this post and have carefully uh, and have been carefully considering it for the better part of the last year, reads Twitch's response to the post. While we are declining this request, it's still crucial to know that the primary value of sharing your feedback and user voice is to have your voices heard on suggestions and considered. <laughs> okay, uh, we will not always be able to provide the desired outcome, but it's important to, uh, to us to be transparent and open when we can and we will be focused on providing more consistent updates on user voice as time goes on the closing of this request thread comes alongside a new blog post from twitch president dan clancy which further addresses the revenue split the close oh no don't firstly twitch is amending the revenue split for its top streamers something that was reported back in April. in april some streamers have been offered standard agreements with premium subscription terms something twitch has not discussed uh, public, uh, publicly but has been known in the community for some time in the blog post clancy admitted quote we don't believe it's right for those on standard contracts to have varied revenue shares based on the size of the streamer End quote. A new change in revenue split, uh, split means that while these streamers will retain a 70-30 split for the first 100k earned through subscription revenue, above this split will be 50-50. This change will take effect from the 1st of June 2023. It's clear then that top streamers will still receive beneficial treatment, even if, as Clancy pointed out, any revenue loss from this new split will likely be made up by ad revenue. Uh, said Clancy, quote, In an ideal world, all streamers would be on the same set of terms regardless of size. However, instituting that policy would have a negative impact on the streamers currently on these terms, many of whom were instrumental in helping us build the Twitch we know today. These streamers have come to depend on the additional revenue split to maintain their, uh, maintain their standard of living. Uh, okay, we'll stop there. There's a whole lot more to this article. Um, so we'll put the link of that into the Twitch chat. But Bib, the summary is Twitch pays... 50-50 split. If you are a Twitch partner, you get 50% of subs. If someone puts down, I can't, uh, was it four quid, five dollars or something like that for subs? If you put five dollars sub down, Twitch take 250. The sub, uh, uh, the the channel that you sub to takes 250. Um, for larger streamers that have been around for years and were the ones that essentially helped to found Twitch, they were rewarded with better contracts. Uh, as in, they take 70%, Twitch take 30%. Um... Twitch are now trying to pedal that back, saying that it's not fair on other content creators to have differing contracts, but understand that 
you can't really just renege on a deal that helped put you in place. So the way that they're doing that is to pay 70-30 on the first $100,000 earned. After that, it drops down to a 50-50 split. Now, there's a lot of discourse on this. People are, are, are not happy at Twitch changing terms. Other people are happy that people that are already earning tons of money aren't getting as much of it. Um, which almost feels like a little bit of a jealous clawback to me. There's all sorts of different uh, nuances to it, but what are your immediate thoughts? My immediate thoughts is that Twitch are just trying to earn money for... uh, trying to earn more money by not doing very much. That was my immediate thought, because for the first £100,000, is that the first £100,000 that comes through a, a Twitch partner's channel? So, say, for instance, someone like Summit or Shroud, who have had more than 100,000 come through their channel. Is this 100,000 pound from, say it went live today, so that if they earn 100,000 pound over the next four months, that will be 70% to them. And then after that, it'll drop down to thir- uh, drop down to 50%. Or is it lifetime? Because it feels like if it's lifetime, then straight off the bat, you're losing 20% for nothing. I mean, it's, it's, it's Twitch's platform. They can genuinely do what they want. Um, which is annoying, especially when you've had contracts. If you are one of these top tier streamers that they have signed you to the platform, you might be one of one hundred. Um, you might have some except you might have a better deal in place for that. But if you're not, then that you're just going to lose twenty percent overnight, which is massively shit. Because t- for a lot of instances, Twitch is fantastic, but a lot of a lot of instances where they're trying to look after their creators, it could be a hell of a lot better. And that's exactly what we're seeing overnight because they need because Twitch obviously needs to try and take more money or they want to try and increase their profit margins. What's what shall we do? Okay, well they're earning one hundred thousand pounds. We could take thirty grand of that, but what if we could take fifty, and they won't be able to do anything about it? Okay, yeah, we'll just take the other over twenty percent as well. That's exactly what it feels like. They needed more money, so they'll reduce the gap of which they're paying other content creators. That might that was my immediate thought. There's, there's, it doesn't seem to be that there's anything else in place. I mean, you mentioned that Twitch are complaining about how much it's cost them to be able to host all of this stuff. Or someone who streams is it two hundred hours a month? It's costing them about a thousand pounds. I'm actually which... just, just trying to trying to find that. Like it mentions, it costs a thousand dollars basically to run. Uh... Twitch for people. Uh, there we go. This is it. Um, so Twitch, their justification for cutting that money out is, lastly, we have to talk about the cost of our service. This is from Twitch's blog on this. So the article that we were looking at then was obviously a news article um, from Eurogamer looking back at the whole situation and, and the backlash from it. This is where the backlash started. So this is actually Twitch's blog. Um, I think it was Dan Clancy at, at Twitch. Let me see. Uh uh yeah dan clancy does it so lastly we have to talk about the cost of our service delivering high definition low latency always available live video to nearly every corner of the world is expensive using the published rates from amazon web services interactive video service which is essentially twitch video live video costs for a 100 concurrent user streamer who streams 200 hours a month are more than one thousand dollars per month we don't typically talk about this because frankly you shouldn't have to think about it we'd rather you focus on doing what you do best but to fully answer the question of why not 70 to 30 uh, ignoring the high cost of delivering the twitch service would mean meant uh, would, would have meant giving you an incomplete answer so basically that's the reason they mentioned the 70 30 stuff is what they're saying is because it costs them a thousand dollars a month to run a stream but that's based on everyone running 200 hours a month with 100 concurrent users not not everyone streams 200 hours a month so that's already a massive number i mean obviously some streamers do some streamers will do more than 200 hours a month Mm -hmm. but that's that's such a huge generalizing ballpark and what makes that even worse for me is uh twitch look at any of their marketing we've just added hype trains and we've added this that and the other and we've got these other new boosts that will put you on if you get a good hype train that's going strong you can put your twitch uh streamer of choice on the front page which will increase their exposure and increase their revenue and stuff and twitch are talking to us about how hype trains and stuff have increased revenue but by 25 percent but yet they are dropping uh other people's market shares by 20 percent there it's like well another platform needs to be cost effective but it just it just it's just i can't stomach it and i don't have a lot of time for the people that out there that i've seen like 
I was talking to Bibby before we went live. People will, will see how much uh, a first aider, an ambulance paramedic, is paid. And then they will see how much a footballer is paid. And then they will shit the bed and say, we'll take the money off the footballers. They're already earning shitloads anyway. And all they do is kick a bit, a bit of leather around. These people are out saving lives. You should pay them more. It's not the footballer's fault. It is not the footballer's fault. That is a completely different person in a completely different vertical. Their business area is different from paramedics. The, the people that are causing the issues with paramedics is government, is their management system. That is the problem. But by allowing uh, the conversations for t blaming the richer people that are part of the system, the people that are successful in the system are not the problem for the people that aren't successful in the system. Mm -hmm. The system is the problem. And this is it. Like People that are, uh, that are happy that Twitch is taking, the less money, uh, is taking more money from the richer earners now is not the problem. The system is the problem. Uh, so, yeah, this is it. I mean... When 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 you put that, we'll we'll, we'll do the seventy thirty split for the first hundred thousand dollars. Th a lot of people are thinking someone's earning a hundred thousand dollars on Twitch. I don't earn a hundred thousand dollars, and I do work air quotes proper job. So if they're having if they're earning seventy percent of that, that's still seventy thousand that they're earning there before uh, they they take more of a cut kind of thing, eh? And then it drops down to fifty fifty. But if you were earning a million-ish per year. I mean, I didn't do the numbers. I'm directly quoting someone else here. So I was watching TSM Break, streamer I tend to watch quite a lot, PUBG streamer. Um, usually, not at the moment, he's playing Cyberpunk. As what is one of those one million concurrent players a day that we were talking about yesterday. Uh, so he was talking about yesterday, and he gave an example of if a Twitch streamer earns a million, then they are instantly losing two to $300,000 off the back of that instantly boom okay twitch has just gone okay but you can earn it with ad revenue and everything elsewhere but ad revenue has been known to decrease sub revenue you play more ads it will impact the size of your channel growth because more people are getting more ads and uh people often go yeah people sub to get rid of the ads also people see shitloads of ads and just leave and go and watch someone else uh, or heaven forbid leave the platform entirely and jump over to youtube so this, for me, is tone deaf. The fact that yeah. some people are out there celebrating Twitch dropping those on 70-30% to a 50-50% like everyone else to make the playing field level is wrong. We should be pushing a better situation. And there's an unanswered question. One of the things in the article, one of the embedded tweets said, um, if Twitch are saying 70-30 is not sustainable and Amazon provides their video services, which is the company that owns Twitch, so they're not even paying them a stupid premium. Mm. How come YouTube can do a 70-30 split and be happy uh, and continue with that? I, it, just does, it just does not compute. It just does not compute yeah. for me. But, I mean, yeah, it all comes down to scalability. Just because you are someone who is grafting, who's working, and you, you're classed as a streamer who... It isn't a proper job. If you're in hundred thousand pounds, that's great. But scalability. Imagine you are someone who works as oh, I, I, immediately. I, Samantha's job came into uh, into my head. Then, but I won't tell anyone what that what, what she does. Not anything dodgy or anything. But I just don't want to dox her or anything. Um, She's still drug king. But then, imagine, right? yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, if you are someone who earns twenty grand a year. And then someone just for the sake of potentially try it. Well, I mean, we don't know the reason why Twitch are doing it. They're claiming that it costs them a little bit more to put back in um, to actually function the streams in the first place for 200 hours. I don't know where the bloody hell pulled the plug that number from, but imagine someone says to you, "Okay, you earn twenty thousand pounds, but we need to take an extra. We need to take twenty percent off the top. Why? Because we need to put a new toilet in." or whatever it is in your building or build a rebuild the kitchen or retail at the car park whatever it is and whatever their excuse is how annoyed would you be if that was the case would your friends be pissed off with you with that if you used to put it on social media i'm pretty certain that everyone will have your back in being that that is a disgrace but apparently because you're a content creator and you earn a hundred thousand pounds rather than earning twenty thousand pounds that that then becomes oh it's all right they'll be able to whack it do you know what i mean They'll be they'll, they'll be fine. They're already earning hundred thousand pounds. Just getting a bit more taken off the top. Like if someone is literally taking your money away from you, you that's a that's a wild problem. That is the problem. Yeah, I mean, anyone like losing twenty to thirty percent 
uh, I know it was a 20, uh, it was a percent split, so it wasn't 20, 30%. But imagine, imagine losing, instantly taking 20% off someone like that. Um, I mean, what would it be from from a seventy percent to a fifty percent? What is that drop? I know we're working a percent of a percent there. My brain can't do that yeah. while I'm speaking, but but it's a big old chunk of cash. If someone took that much away from your earnings, just because someone's earning a big chunk of money doesn't mean it's 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 better to do it. It's still a percentage drop that someone will be losing, just because just because I know that these people helped. They've mentioned that these people helped create the platform that Twitch is today. I acknowledge that you made everything that I'm doing possible, but I don't acknowledge it because I'm taking the cash back. It's like you, you literally just just lip service. That's all it was. You've taken it away. You've shit on me immediately after. So it's 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 bad. It's bad. I mean, there's a bunch of comments in the chat. Let's go back through. Um, oh, great. <laughs> the rich people aren't getting paid. The company is. I mean, that's, that's kind of what yeah. it is, though. I mean, there is a bit of that. There is rich people, and then there is the company in there. But the rich people are there because they've made the platform a success. Whether that was through hard work uh, and graft, or whether that was through a bit of luck or a bit of both. Summit, Lyric, uh, the old school uh, ninja and doc, who obviously aren't on the platform anymore, Timmy Tenders and stuff, they all help make the platform what it is today. The XQCs of the world, whether you like them or not, um, they made it be what it is. They brought in the audiences and still hold those audiences. So just because they've made it and are now massively successful doesn't mean that they shouldn't be entitled to what they've earned. Twitch, in effect, is their business and they are now not being paid for it. I know that it's not their business, but it's a it's a different model from your standard business ownership model. So, yeah. Imagine if the top, the top 1,000 creators on Twitch ended up leaving and going over to YouTube. What do you reckon that their first thing that Twitch would do to try and make it a viable option to come back and Twitch again. They're going to say, right, okay, well, if you're earning this amount of money, we'll increase it again. It's just, it, it, it seems very, it, it's just the, the whole extreme of things to try and obviously cater and get more money in for themselves until they can't get any more money in and their profit margin just go, woo, start to decrease a hell of a lot more because the people who was bringing them in the most money in the first place has decided, you know what, don't fucking need this. I'll move over to YouTube instead and get, I don't know what the split is over there, but it's significantly more than 50%. I mean, like, you you look at most creators that will have... They'll probably have thousands of subs on the channel, which which is a huge chunk of revenue. Um, but, like, you look at the top end, your likes of your summits and stuff like that, they'll have 30,000 concurrent subs. That is an obscene amount of money for the for the general working person. Um, so those people will lose out on a chunk of cash. If you drop to the tier that's that's... I mean, baby, we're talking. We hate the phrase "small streamer." You are a streamer. Just because you don't have as many followers doesn't mean that you are small, therefore less valuable. But we'll use it for now anyway. The smaller streamers, and then you've got the massive streamers. There is a huge scale in the middle of different levels of intermediate level streamers. Mm -hmm. um, but those people are earning more money off of ad hashtag ad placement. So they're watching. Uh, you're watching them play uh, games that are from outside of their vertical or is a new release in their vertical or you're watching them promote Huel or G Fuel or other things that end in Ewell that you can <laughs> get a, an affiliate code or whatever. The reason this stuff happens is because Twitch as a platform doesn't provide enough revenue for them to grow substantially because, because oh great, they've earned $100,000 through the platform so they're getting a paid 70% split on that so they've got $70,000 from that but Within that is all of their marketing costs. Not only so they've got to take their own wage off of it. They've not got seventy grand. Cha ching. They've got seventy grand. But in our case, okay, we need to take off the costs for the loot drop every month. These logos and stuff, they don't pay for themselves. And if they just look the same year after year after year, they'll look boring and old and outdated. So we need to create new stuff for that. So the design stuff needs to be paid for. That hundred thousand dollars doesn't really go anywhere. That well, it goes somewhere. Poof, that's where it goes pretty quickly. So the set, and then obviously you've got economies of scale. The larger content creators, your summits and your stuff like that, they need to pay for bigger, more extravagant things. It's just the way content works. You need to be tweeting the pictures of your your baby two Lambos over there. You need to be <laughs> uh, showing that you're uh, going to these events, and and you need to be giving big profitable prize things to your communities or whatever. So it all goes up. Uh, 
in scale in that sort of sense. Not equally, meaning are oh, you in a million? Well, you've only got the same amount left over at the end of the month. It's not the case, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, so, yeah, when the conversations are, Twitch should be providing a better share of revenue for its community so the community can sustain itself and grow and sustain Twitch. Twitch have gone the other way. The knee-jerk reaction have gone. Actually, we need to make sure the platform is uh, all sustaining. Uh, let's take more money for ourselves. And there was a, I, I won't be able to find it now, but there was a good article that someone shared uh, from, I th- oh, it was, it was a tweet. Actually, I think I remember it was. Whiz. Let me see. Footwork is, uh, I read this the other day. Uh, let's see if I can find it. Oh my God, he tweets a shitload. Ugh. <laughs> God damn. Um, so yeah, his, uh, so this is a tweet from at FWiz, Fwiz, Ryan Watt, um, CEO of Polygon Studios. He replied to Twitch. This was a tweet he posted two days ago. This is an image asset. I can actually bring it up on screen so you guys can see it while I'm reading through it. Um, let me take the discussion now because it's just the bottom bit at the bottom. He's talking about non-ad revenue, infra, cross, uh, infra costs and growing and stuff like that. But his summary, the best way for Twitch to grow monetization would not to be short-sighted and take advantage of their live dominance by adjusting revenue share, but rather leverage that dominance to grow non-line ga- uh, non-live gaming viewership on the platform to help scale their ads business out. This would alleviate the unnecessary revenue share changes that will drive creators to other platforms as well as distribute the ad load balance on live content to better serve users. So people off- often ask me, how then? Is it just changing the revenue share? They're clearly taking the money because they need to. Um, and yeah, they probably are. They probably want the books to balance and so on. So that's why they're taking X Crash. They wouldn't just take it away. However, th- there is a very good comment in there. YouTube has video, VOD content. Very few people watch VOD content on Twitch. Twitch has such an amazing library of VOD content in its clips. Look at how big Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, TikTok videos mm-hmm. and stuff are. Twitch has been doing that for longer in the form of clips, but doesn't really leverage that in a way for people to access that content on the go. And that is what this guy's saying here. Twitch should 100% be looking at different revenue streams to to better utilize ad placement, which makes the system more uh, capable at having consistent ad revenue that Twitch can take and pay on and pay forward to its users. By using clips and VODs in a better way than it does, Twitch could access that. But instead, Twitch went, to that with premieres a few years ago and then just got rid of it uh, because mm. it wasn't really working properly because it was a bit shit. So that is where I think they should do. Stop adjusting the revenue shares and start looking at how you can make more revenue throughout the entire vast amount of content that you have on Twitch. That's where I go. Yeah. Um, where did we get to? I hate Amazon. Wouldn't ever use them, says Nietzsche. Uh, yeah, 100%. It's funny how companies will, uh, will go, look how profitable we are. We have more than double what we did last year. Okay, then spread the love. We can't. We're only just scraping by. Exactly, David. Exactly. Uh, Twitch is the British gas of streaming. (laughs) Fair. Footballers on Twitch will be offered a 2080 split to compensate their salary. Yeah, it's it's that sort of fucking weird, bizarre conversation. Uh, Amazon knows more about me than I know about myself. Uh, Clearly not how to uh, make a profitable ad system but there you go more ads and less money for the creators exactly tons of ads and we'll we'll pay you less there's more people watching than ever before there's more ads running there's more people running ads but you'll get a less market share all right okay makes sense uh jumped on someone's stream the other day six 30 second ads the reason i don't watch tv is ads exactly i mean we have been uh trialing running ads on our stream recently so we have had more people on our stream saying that they've uh, been receiving ads. Usually it's not a problem for us because we are a small channel and most people that watch our stream are subs anyway. So it means that we can take advantage of the system for a very, very nominal amount of money, uh, usually on our channel. Um, But we've been tinkering with it just to to test anyway. In reality, we might turn the ad stuff back off if it means that people... I mean, you don't get less ads. You just choose where they are shown. Basically, if people drop into our channel, they get to watch for a few minutes before seeing an advert now. That is the premise of what we're trying to do. Rather than people looking at our channel, seeing three minutes of ads and going, fuck this shit, I'm not going to stick around and leave him. We've mm. tried to change it so people can actually drop in, see the content, 
start to enjoy it, get shown a few ads, and then keep watching again afterwards. That's the way we've tried to put it in. Tried to split it up so the ads aren't all in one three-minute goal as well. But, you know, Twitch do what Twitch do. Um, uh, my issue with this is a lot of people assume Partner and made it. Uh, they, uh, they don't seem to treat uh, streaming as a real business. If they aren't diversifying their potential slash remit and have pegged all hope on a ver uh, very thirsty corporation, then more full them. Subsidize your content with other content to ensure you don't need a different job. Exactly. We don't do this full time. This is our side gig. This is something we do on the side. And when I say that, we don't we don't prey on any of the revenue we get from this. Any revenue that comes from this goes back into the stream. Uh, so we pay for the loot drop every month. That is pretty much our our subs pay for that, effectively. Like we aren't really getting... There's a few quid here and there, which we build up over time, and then after a chunk of time, we have enough to pay for a studio upgrade or something like that, which is expensive, which means that we we lose money on this. Safe if you account for the... Uh, as we're Feck, at... better do that. No ads for me. <laughs> Feck, better do that. No ads for me. Let's go, Phony Asteroid. Enjoy hey. your ad preview, and appreciate you dropping that down. Um, but yeah, if you, if you account for our time, if me and Bibby were to be paid minimum wage uh this channel would be massively in debt because we don't earn enough money to do this content if we were doing this properly we would do more youtube content we would have a patreon set up on the side we would be putting content out on tiktok and instagram and everywhere else as well uh, to try and facilitate more eyes on the content YouTube would be a big part of it, though, in terms of who we're doing it to generate revenue. So I agree with mm -hmm. that. You should definitely be diversifying your portfolio if you are looking at it as a revenue uh, setup. That said, not everyone has those skills um, or time uh, to do that. So I, it, it, in an ideal world, your content should be diversified. But uh, in an ideal world, actually, that wouldn't be the case. In an ideal world, the platform that you're investing all your time in would be investing their time into you as well. And, and that's not really what's happening with that sort of stuff as well. Um, uh, I'm surprised no streamers start their own website where they're the only stream and they keep all the revenue. It would be easy to, uh, to promote with all uh, with their already large following on other socials. That, that, that was the rumor for the doc, though, wasn't it? The doc was a rumor to believe in Twitch to go set up his own stuff to do that sort of stuff. Um, anyway, when's the Logi logo getting added to your sponsorship video? We actually need to update the full Logi Astro Announce mm -hmm. video stuff, so it will it will be added at some point. But we're uh, we're just we're just sorting out a few things behind the scenes first. It won't be any time right now. Also, because our design teams are absolutely slammed right now. Yeah. Uh, so that will slow things down. Uh, we all know the money is going to Bezos Viagra substitute Blue Horizon rocket. Uh, should be more like Blue Pill rocket. I've never seen a more penis looking rocket. <laughs> Say the word rocket <laughs> a few more times, David. Uh, I fully <laughs> expected it uh, from him, to be honest. I, I split from work early so I can drink beer. Sounds good, Lake. It does. Uh, they say rockets look like they're on it. <laughs> a bald prick. Mm. I think you're right. This. Uh, there's a funny thing here. The chat panel is the right size slash scale for shorts. Imagine ads reimagined where it mutes the main vid and a short is played. Uh, Twitch, if you see this, I want money for this idea. <laughs> there are ads on this channel. Can't say I've seen one in years. That's because you've been a 25-month sub gag ad, so you don't need to see it. Legend. Let's go. I saw them for a week, about two weeks ago, even though I was subbed. Yep, Twitch brain fart. Let's go. Um, thank you once again, Funny Asteroid, for the sub. Appreciate that. Did you get a sub refund? Uh, no. 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 <laughs> No, 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 no. Oi, oi, Savaloy. AMG, welcome in, dude. Uh, Rumpig, welcome yeah. in as well. How's it going? It's going good. We're just talking about Twitch's revenue split. I mean, I did have the discussion now on screen, but I'll put an article up. Uh, about Twitch has asked its users to provide feedback on the issues that they don't, that, that they want addressing on Twitch. And the main one was the revenue split. Most people are on 50-50 uh, split. Some people, legacy contracts are on 70-30 split. People want everyone to be on 70 30 split and twitch has gone do you know what this is overwhelmingly the topic that you are all speaking about and have been speaking to us about for years and we hear you mm -hmm. we're not doing anything about it but we just wanted to know that we heard it if you do want to bring up any other conversations that's fine we're not going to do anything with this nice not very nice it's bad it's, it's not bad it's not it's not good and it when people are are passionately talking about content diversification and, and content platforms not milking creators uh, because YouTube is a vastly profitable business and Twitch is a profitable bi uh, business. It's just a matter of shareholders want more profit and more profit and we need bigger margins for profit and stuff. So when people are already saying, well, you clearly are profitable businesses, how about sharing that profit around and then they go and take even more away, which is just not a good look. Uh, okay, we are massively over time, 
So yeah. I'm going to shelve the Stalker article, Bib. I know you do want to talk about Stalker. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we do have an article about Stalker 2 reportedly not releasing until 2024 at the earliest. It's fine. It's a couple of years away. So we can wait for that, uh, to have that conversation mm-hmm. until Monday. There was also an article about popular YouTuber Dunkey is launching uh, a game publisher. He's sick of sitting on the sidelines. We're going to shelve that one two uh which means we only have two articles to go through one of them will be very brief because we don't even need to go through the full article which is this one tom ivan at vgc talking about a white xbox series x console has been spotted in a logitech advert ironically we actually watched this advert during logi play on wednesday and didn't even notice but you can see it just there uh just over the shoulder of this person with the advert there is a white series x console so outside of special editions microsoft's console has only been available in black since launch a new version of logitech show uh, sh- uh, logitech uh, a new logitech advert should i say shows what appears to be a white version of microsoft's xbox series x console outside of special editions blah, 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 blah. okay there you go um vgc has contacted microsoft to ask if there are plans to launch a white version of the xbox series x or if the console featured in the logitech video is a bespoke one created for the advert microsoft launched a white version of the xbox series uh, Xbox Elite Series 2 controller on Wednesday when Xbox's September update also began rolling out. Interesting. Uh, key features of the update include... Okay, it doesn't actually say... It. No comment from Xbox on this. But is it just a coincidence? I mean, it could be. This is It's a whole white panel. We've got um, the white controllers, the white PlayStation, the white Yeti mic. We've got white VR headsets uh, and so on. Let's just skin an Xbox and make it white to put it in there. It could be that. Um, But the fact that there was a white Xbox Elite Series 2 controller announced on Wednesday, which is when the Logi Play stream happened, that makes me think there maybe should have been an announcement on Wednesday and some it went wrong. For some reason, they couldn't put this announcement out as planned so they've pulled it back and they've gone, okay, well, let's just leave it in that video because nobody really knows. Yeah. And if nobody notices it, then we can do a Phil Spencer. Oh, I actually had an Xbox uh, Series S on my shelf behind me six months ago and nobody noticed. It. And if everybody does notice, then we can just ignore it and pretend it's just one of those things. So for me, it could be real. And if it is real, then that's exactly the Xbox Series X that I'm going to be getting this year. What are your thoughts, Pip? Yeah, I think it is real and I think it's, um, it's just hiding it in plain sight. I think after the joke last time about having... Uh, the the Xbox behind him the entire time and nobody noticing. I think they're just it's just a I think they're just trying to meme it if I'm being honest and just probably putting it in places that you wouldn't expect him to see it or they're just hiding it in plain sight. I do think it will arrive at some point. We all we always get different variations of consoles, which is again why I'm still baffled that we don't have uh, different variations of like PlayStation consoles or uh, limited edition versions of Xbox consoles. I think there was a Halo one, um, but there used to be loads. You used to be able to get Remember the 360 where you could change the faceplate? I mean, you've still got some of beside you in the office. Like People wanting to customize their consoles and getting different versions of them has, has been a thing forever. Going back to like the silver PlayStation 2s and things like that and the, the, the three different versions of the PlayStation 1, people want to be able to customize their consoles or buy limited editions. Um, we've only got the black versions of the consoles or the white versions of the Series S. There will eventually be color scheme changes as well as a additions to the consoles themselves are removals shall we say to make them slimline versions yeah i mean i'm i feel like it's i feel like it's a thing it's just a case of whether it's a thing right now it's definitely it's definitely going to be a thing we're going to get a white xbox at some point in time it's going to happen the fact that there is a white xbox featuring in a logitech conference and that logitech conference featured the logitech g cloud device which is is Mm -hmm. being made in partnership with xbox Logitech conference on a Wednesday. Logitech partners with Xbox in that conference on that Wednesday. That conference has a white Xbox. Xbox release a white Xbox controller on that Wednesday. It just all stacks for this being there is a white Xbox to me. Um, yeah. And for some reason, they've just stopped it internally. It's like, oh, shit, we, we haven't got all our POS stuff internally. Oh, our store has been, uh, stock has been delayed or, or something else has happened so we don't want to mention it because it could impact stock shares or whatever. Let's do it next mm-hmm. week or on Friday or on Sunday or in a, in a month or whatever. I feel like this is a thing. I feel like it probably should have happened. If not happened already earlier this week, it, it possibly should have happened on Wednesday alongside that controller. But I think it's a thing. So, yeah, I, I will take a white Xbox Series X, please. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> 
Phony Asteroid says, and I'll read Mr. Bit with shopping. Uh, we'll have to do the podcast catch up later on. Nice. Uh, Madge I'll says, read. talking about Twitch being Robin Bastards. Uh, legit question Do I install Windows 11 chat? Uh, Viv, I haven't myself on my PC. I have a, I have on my laptop um, because I thought, well, I want to know whether it's good, whether there's any issues or anything, but I haven't used it for anything like OBS and stuff. Um, there, I, I still have a big update to OBS that I still need to run, which brings all their audio stuff in, and I don't want to do that just in case it breaks everything too. Um, but yeah, I haven't installed Windows 11 because I know there was issues. I usually leave it a year-ish to make sure everything is fixed because mm-hmm. I know it will probably mean that I have a, a lot of stuff to do, but that's 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 my opinion. I haven't done it yet, but yeah. Uh, Bezos wanted more cash to not pay tax on. Exactly, exactly. Uh, Funny Astro says, I uninstalled after a week. There was a lot of issues at the start. It's probably okay now, but probably okay is not the same as it's okay. So probably until I know definitively, I, I won't be doing it. Um, why Xboxes look clean, they do. Uh, Stalker 2 is based on the top two uh, Twitch streamers. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Uh, the race to increase profits year on year kills in business growth at the expense of anything else. Exactly. Uh, I used to have the Gears of War custom Xbox 360. Um, I had a Crystal OG Xbox. There are different PS5s. I've seen them. Virgin Media does one. Sky does one. Plus Net does one. Link does one. <laughs> They're rooters, you see. They're all rooters. That's the joke. Rooters. Nice. Okay, on that, Bob Show, we are going to wrap things up with our final article. I'm not going to ask Bibi to play the uh, guitar because he's got a dodgy broken missing string or something like that. So instead, I'll type exclamation mark FF in the chat, which gives you this. Free game Friday. Friday. Nice. We finished the week with Free Game Friday where we tell you what games you can buy for free. Usually it's from the Epic Game Store, and that is exactly where we're going to go right now, and I want to make sure I get this. So, Bib, as soon as we finish the stream, I need you to remind me that Ark Survival Evolved is the game that is available free right now on the Epic Game Store. That and Gloomhaven. Uh, once again, this art and art and, art and nice article is written by Morgan. Uh, that was article and Morgan mixed together. Art and, <laughs> nice. This article is written by Morgan Park at PC Gamer. Um, so it's a great opportunity to grab some classics on the Epic Store this week. First, if you've never managed to add dinosaur wrangling to uh, the beloved pastime of tree punching, you finally have a chance to add Ark Survival standard to add survival standard arc survival evolved to your library but if you've had your fill of hunger uh fill of filling hunger meters maybe you'd be interested in gloomhaven the excellent video game adaption of the acclaimed tabletop dungeon crawler surely one of these options will let you experience the unadulterated thrill of managing theropod fecal waste but it's not like you have to choose they're both free after all there you go good old write-up as always uh by the team at pc gamer so Ark Survival Evolved, free for anyone that has Epic Game Store right now in Gloomhaven too. Grab it, fill yeah. your boots. So we are done. We appreciate everyone that stuck around. Thank you very much for joining us for a bunch of articles today. We did have to shelve a couple because we got some tasty news stories in the earlier <laughs> couple, which is always nice to have. Nice to have. So do feel free to join us on Monday as we go through those. Uh, tomorrow, I will be back with some PUBG. Don't forget that. Um, 10 a.m.-ish onwards. And then on Sunday morning, Bibby will be continuing a stream that starts tomorrow. Uh, there is an yes. FM 2022 stream, Football Manager stream, uh, that is going to be passed from pillar to post, all mm-hmm. in the name of Cancer Research UK. Uh, we have retweeted a tweet this morning. You can see it on our social media uh, if you want to go and see that. But uh, that's all this weekend. Mr. Bibb, yes. is there anything you'd yes. like to add? Yes, again, uh, also as well... Um... We went live yesterday with another PGA Tour video. Again, massive thank you to the guys over at 2K for providing us with the build of the game to be able to create some content for. I have got another video that's uh, due to be coming out over the weekend at some point. It does need tighten up and finishing editing. The script's nearly done too. Um, so if you could, with the video that's in there, you guys came in clutch yesterday when i asked in the discord if you could just like and retweet it. If you could go over to the video itself, drop a like on it, just type um more golf more game uh, reply in the comments it'll be, it'll mean a lot to us it helps us get into the algorithm and it helps to you know have these opportunities again it's a sport that i absolutely love i absolutely adore the golf club games which are now the 2k games as well so being able to work on a franchise like this is kind of a dream come true as it was many years ago when i first started doing pez content so if you like to see more of this stuff going forward then we would absolutely appreciate if you could do that for yeah. us just to jump on that that that, that. We can't hammer that bit home enough. Everyone hears it so much that they become blind to it, deaf to it. Uh, it's the fact that you get the hit the like, the comment and subscribe sort of stuff. I mean, obviously, subbing to the channel means that you can um, see more of our content. Liking the video and commenting tells the algorithm that this is good content and shows it to more people. So if you can sub to the channel, that's great. But if you can also 
if you watch the video, fantastic. If you can then take that further by liking and commenting, that means we get more people seeing the channel, which does help with the growth. So if you wonder why that happens, that is why. So much appreciated. Sorry, babe. Back to you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, sorry, I, while you was doing that, I just had a sip of my drink, which was, again, very well welcomed. Um, <laughs> but we go live again next week with five episodes of The Scoop. So if you want to help shape any of those shows, then there's two ways that you can do so. First of all, find us on social media. It is that Ice Cream Mutlers across all major social media platforms or alternatively, get involved with our Discord. If you're watching this on any of our on-demand services, go into the description below. You'll see all the links that you require listed there below. But all we need from you is your URL plus your false impressions. We will then give our first impressions on the very next show, which will be at what time on Monday? Mr. Graham Day. 10 a.m. Ish. Ish. <laughs> <laughs> nice. 10 a.m. ish. We will be back on Monday with a scoop. We'll be back over the weekend, some video game stuff. So do feel free to join us for that then. And if you want something to do, to go watch that video. Do it. We'd appreciate that very, very much. Uh, stick around, though. Now we're going to drop a raid on one of our friends. We'll get to help someone else out. And you get 250 sprinkles that you can spend whilst you're here on our stream. Like Tito did the other day when he made me wear an Iron Man helmet to play some PUBG, which was comical for those that haven't seen it. If you haven't watched it, do go watch back through our clips or watch the stream from Wednesday. For now, though, have yourselves a beautiful day. And until next time, stay frosty! Stay frosty!